Hey, Mark J. Spears from The Undefeated is here. I've been dying to ask Michael Holly this all show. And now I got both of y'all, so both of y'all can break it down. Spears, you first, then Michael. Um, all right, so you know, Harden rang the bell. That, that outfit was awful. He did his press conference, which we'll get to in a minute. Simmons did his press conference and the other. Meanwhile, Boston, winners of nine straight, 11 of 12. They should make it 10 straight tonight. I think they got the Kings, if I'm not Detroit. mistaken. I forget. They got the somebody. Detroit. Oh, the that's what it is. Detroit. Thank you. Yeah. So they should make it 10 straight. Their defense has been incredible. They beat the brakes off the Sixers last night, albeit a shorthanded Sixers team. Spears, how did the Celtics, because at one point it felt like they were struggling to figure it out, find an identity. How did they not only find it, but start thriving, slash how much of a factor can they be come playoff time in the Eastern Conference? I did want to ask you, are y'all not paying a cold bill at your house? Why you still, why you got a beanie on right now? I don't know. Just in that, in that kind of mood. That, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe my hair, maybe my hairline isn't what it usually is. I don't oh, know. Oh, my, my bad, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't think of that. that. Maybe I thought, I maybe I thought, maybe I thought, maybe I thought it right. complimented the hoodie. I don't know. Maybe it's a look. Maybe you it's were, a mood. Uh, you were in yeah. LA. Mm-hmm. You, did you ever? Did you find somebody in L.A.? Did you find a barber out there? Oh, I did. He did a good. Yeah, he did a good. Yeah, he did a good job. Okay. He did, he did a good, okay. Did a good job. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought I'm that was old, I thought that was an ode to the dancers of the Super Bowl show or something like that. Maybe that was an ode. To <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. To answer your question. Oh, you climbing? You just want to. You just want to get those off. You want to get those right. jokes off first. Right. Like, no, I, I love you. I miss y'all, man. Y'all was supposed to go to dinner <laughs> with me in Boston. You skipped out, so I owe you both one. Hey man, oh, listen, we skipped listen, out. You know, things happen. Damn. Things happen. Things happen. Damn. Yeah, that's all right. I, I didn't hold a grudge. Um, Celtics, I think one, you're getting used to your new coach. That takes time, right? Two, health. Three, I, I like their addition, getting the big back from Houston. Should have never had traded him. And so now I, I, they, they're finally getting on the same page and. Uh, realizing that the trade deadline is over too in, in Los Angeles after the trade deadline. I'm curious to see how the Lakers look today. You could see like a sigh of relief after the trade deadline pass. And obviously the Celtics uh, were playing well before the trade deadline too, but uh, they just finally are a healthy team getting on the same page. And I knew there were going to be a problem before the season. At least I thought they would be uh, from talking to both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown before the uh, season started and their excitement uh, playing towards each other. And these are two superstars where there's no ego between them. There's no drama between them. They just want to win. And so they've, they've like, the East has a lot of scary teams right now. And I'm glad that Boston is um, finally showing that they are what they're supposed to be now. And, um, you know, but they, they made some smart moves at the trade deadline that I thought didn't you know upset their team, but enhanced their team and made them better. So I, I really like what Boston's doing right now. Yeah, what about you, yeah, you right, the backyard. Spears. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I, I think uh, Ime Udoka is a big part of this. Uh, they asked for him. They, you know, they tuned out Brad Stevens last year. He knew it. It was obvious. Uh, they didn't have anything against him personally, but they just stopped. They really stopped responding to him. He was there for seven years as a coach seven, eight years as a coach and most of his teams overperformed last year, his team underachieved. And so the, the players talked to Stevens and they wanted Udoka in there. And you know, the great thing is Spears, you know, him from from dealing with uh, Ime. I mean, the guy is not. He just says it like if it's on his mind, he's going to tell you they didn't play yeah. well. He's like, hey, we didn't play well. He'll call out guys, not in a mean spirited way, but just as a matter of fact, and you yeah. have to deal with that. And so his first press conference, Mike Smith, first press conference, they're asking him, hey, uh, you know, what do you think about the team? He was like, well, you know, sorry, Brad. Brad Stevens sitting right next to him. Y- y'all didn't pass great last year. Y'all were like 27th in assists. <laughs> he was like, he's like, dude, it's my you boss. Just I'm just going to climb. I'm going to climb the boss. Oh, I the said, contract oh that contract signed. Yeah, the contract yeah. signed. I got direct deposit. You got to deal with this, okay? I got my money. Right. So you got to hear my truth. And so those guys early in the season, he said they got we got punked. He said that Brad Stevens could never talk to him like that. Because if they did, they'd be like, Brad, that ain't you. But that's Ime Udoka. 
and they yeah. finally just I think they just got into what he was talking about. He challenged Jason Tatum challenged Jalen Brown said I want you guys to be playmakers not just scores. I think they struggled for a while. We should be better defensively. They did it for a while. They went off on a lapse and now they're back. So I'll, I'll give him the credit and those guys are playing like stars. Both of them Tatum and Brown are, are playing like all stars. One of them is an official all star Jalen Brown unofficially. I mean, he didn't make the team, but he's playing like an all-star, too. And, and you guys have made several best man references. Have you guys met Nia? Yeah. Since she since she's Unfo- become uh, a part of the Celtics? Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not, no. I've wow. Not, I've not had the pleasure. Yeah. Tell us a pleasure. story. Tell us a story. This is, okay, first of all, this just becomes the most. I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to disrespect the most important. Either, you know what I mean? Well, what you're about to say becomes the most important thing in this interview. You've met her? <laughs> no, I have uh, not really. No. Okay, okay. I've been around her, but I've not met her. But I just assume yeah. y'all being at the press conference, being around the team. I ain't got it like that. No. What are you talking about? Being, I've been being home best man fans about? that you guys would have said hello. <laughs> he probably was well, at the show. No. No, I no, doubt it. I, I'm, I, not, I doing I I'm not doing that it. for many. Let's, let, let, for many let's change the subject before I say before I let's say something say, right. that I, that, yeah. I, that, I, that I shouldn't. Which is, yeah. So we talk, exactly. talking about the, talking about the talking about Spears. the Celtics. See Spears, you know what? Hold on, Mike. Mike, I just want to point this out. Mark Spears is a troublemaker. I, like yeah, I, I'm saying, he's got like he got like big a time. troublemaker spirit. You know, he's just trying to stir things up, man. Just and he just and he, and, he says, and, he, and, and he says it real smooth, so you don't really catch it. Like, wait yeah. a second. But all right, um, I want to talk about the Lakers. Um, it was so funny. Uh, my son, uh, Celtics fan from growing up in New England in Boston, we in LAX. He's like, can I have that Lakers hat? I'm like, dude, you understand that that's not how that works, right? Like, you got to commit. But anyway, I bought him a Lakers hat. So uh, the Lakers, speaking of buying, Buyout market, yeah. if anything, is what's going to help them, not the trade deadline. But I think I saw you tweet something to the effect of uh, maybe it was Anthony Davis and or LeBron James suggesting that the trade line being passed, even if there were reports that they weren't on the same page with Rob Palenka about the urgency of the trade deadline, the trade line having passed is actually, uh, you know, a benefit, a, a silver lining for them or a benefit to them. Now they could just focus on who they have. Is that just spin or is there something no, legitimate? To uh, that? I went to their game on on Saturday, and it just I've, I've went to several Lakers games, and it's been tense, especially after the game, the mood of the team, disappointments after loss, the pressure uh, has been really heavy on them. But this was a it, 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 I don't know if you could have a good loss, but this was a good loss for them because they were competitive. They they should have beat the Warriors that night. The, Clay Thompson went into Superman mode and stole the game away from them, but there were a lot of positives to be taken. Like Russ seemed to play without stress. He, he looked good. Um, LeBron had a good game. Anthony Davis was okay, but the, the fight was there. Um, this was a different Lakers team, and I was told at the practice the day before that Frank Vogel said, look, we got to refocus. These are going to be the you know, 15 guys that we have. So ain't nobody coming in here to save us. And l- let's go. And I think they took note of that. And I actually talked to Magic Johnson um, this morning, and he said he saw LeBron James at, at the Super Bowl, of course, right? They hung out. And, um, he said he told him, man, if you guys can play like you did against the Warriors, then uh, I'm excited for what's to come with this team. And Magic also told me that he was so tonight, the Lakers get a real, real big test, another test. Uh, they playing the Utah Jazz, and yeah. this could give them some really good momentum going into the All Star break. If they have a, you know, a positive game, a win uh, against the Jazz, right? Um, so I'm really, really curious to see how the Lakers fare tonight. There, I, I think they've had a couple days to kind of move on past the trade deadline, and um, I, I, if they could win tonight, maybe they have shaken it off. Uh, certainly there's a lot of questions still with this roster. There's a lot of health that you got to worry about. Will Russ fit in? But from what I saw on Saturday, that was about as encouraging as a game, even in a loss that I've seen with this Lakers squad. All right. Uh, that being said, Mark Spears, uh, how do you feel about that bet? How do you feel about that bet? The Lakers. Oh, Lord. 
<laughs> uh, how you feel about it? I'm, I'm still feeling oh, good. Don't tell me. Cause, well, I know you're gonna do it because we already we already shook on it. You can't back out now. Just, and I'm looking forward to the wine that you're gonna send here because I know you got you excellent know, taste. You know what? You know what your I know problem you got, with? You know what your problem is? I know you got little, too. I know because you, you know right, I got right. good taste in wine. So you know I ain't right, gonna right. send you no Boom Farm. Right, right. You know it's gonna. And, and plus, you know, and I mean, know what else if I, I know? lose. My point is, after I win, I don't know what you send to me. What you mean? After For, win, okay, win, y'all, t- y'all, like, y'all, hey guys, how, hey guys, I, guys. I'm just waiting. Hold on, hold on, no, wait, wait. T- no, should we no, remind, you wait. Should TV, we remind the public thank what you. the bet is? Like TV 101. Like, don't nobody know what the hell y'all talking about. So, guys, so right, for listen. those who may have missed it last time, okay, the bet was Spears thought the Lakers would get out of the first round, if I recall correctly. Holly yeah. Yeah. did not think they would get out of the first round. That's the bet. Right. That was a few. It might have been a couple months ago at this point, but it was no, no, you know, a few weeks ago. But I'm ago, just okay, saying, all runs together. I don't think I don't think they will. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Like Mark, you're talking about. I'm looking at the standings huh? now. They're 26. They're 26 and 30. Oh, oh, the, oh, 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 you've upped the ante. Now they won't make it. I, that's okay. No, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I, look, I, I'm not going to up the ante. I'm going to keep the original terms of the bet, but I, I, I'm I'm feel good about the first round. It's hard we to win the first change, round. We can change you know, the conditions if it, you feel No, I don't want you. No, no, no. I, I got leverage. No, I got leverage, and I'm I'm comfortable <laughs> with it. But what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying is, they're 26 and 31. That means they got 25 games left. They're running out of time. Like I understand what you're saying. In all seriousness. You know, playing well, they did play well against the Warriors, but it is is do you think? I know what Magic is saying. Magic <clears throat> is so biased; he loves the Lakers. Do you think that this is the group? Does this group can this? Does this group have the ability to self-correct, or is it just is it just the flawed group that we see? I mean, if they win the play, and that's around. No, it doesn't work like that. No, it's not. No, it's no. not. No, respectfully. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the same thing. See, it's see, the I, uh, you are. I don't even trust you. I feel like I don't, I feel like I don't even know you anymore. But I feel like I don't even know this. No, I'm sorry. Mike, uh, pivot. As the, Mike, as pivot. The, no, 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 as the, no, no, as the no, look, as the neutral that's, party that's, here. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick in it. I'm not. I'm not walking away from it. I said what I said. They still got LeBron James on their team. He still who, got by the way, Davis on their team. Who, by I'm the way, by has, scored tw- has scored 25 points in consecutive games. I think it's like 22 straight games, something like that. But anyway, longest streak of his career in year 19, which is incredible. Spears, you, I told you this off camera, you did a phenomenal job asking all the right questions to Ben Simmons. It felt like you did everybody's job for him. Every question I heard in the press conference was from you. Um, your biggest takeaway, first from your, you know, your conversation or Ben Simmons press conference uh, and take that wherever you want to go, but also uh, tag that with whether you think this trade, uh, you know, reaps benefits for either team, both teams or neither team. Uh, to answer your first question, there's two things that stood out. One, Ben gave you a bunch of read in between the line quotes. He, he didn't want to. Um, to start any fires, right? He, he didn't want to get into a contest, as you know what I mean, one of those kind of contests. He took the high road. Now, whether that changes uh, as time passes, as he talks to more people, does more interviews, who knows? But I could tell that he, this wasn't the time, but there was a lot of like little in between, like, hey, like I asked him one of the questions, uh, what about, um, what was said about you that bothered you the most and what was misinterpreted? And he's like, man, if we sat and talked about that, it would take all day. So that, yeah. that told me a lot there. The one thing that kind of like was painful to listen to and painful to hear, like, hey, man, you, we, we got all these people who think they're doctors, right? Think they're psychologists or whatever. If somebody tells you that they're hurting mentally, I believe them. I take it yeah. serious. And and there's some personal things that I've dealt with in my life that, you know, I won't share now that makes me feel that way. So when somebody says, you know, please be happy that I'm smiling right now because I was just in a very dark place. 
like to hear him face to face say that. Yeah. That that that, that wasn't fun to hear, right? Especially oh, yeah. Uh, with with the focus on mental health uh, in a good way nowadays. Um, like I look we. we whether he could shoot in the fourth quarter, whether he could make a free throw, all these things you, we could debate. But if the man says he's not doing well mentally, I'm a, I'm a believe him. And and okay. then for, as and, and terms we, of the trade, it's, I think it's a win for both sides because both guys wanted to change, and, and these are the teams they wanted to go to. All right. So we talked about this earlier, and, and Mark, uh, I hear what you're saying. Wait, I'm yeah, sorry. All... Wait, Mike, Mike, I know you got to follow up real quick. I just want to clarify something real quick. I hadn't heard that. Did ben, this is the team that Ben wanted to go to or did Maury just want Harden? Like did Ben really want to go to the Nets? I, I hadn't heard that. I'm sorry, I think Mike, he I wanted sure. to go anywhere. He just wanted to okay, leave. He okay. did it get okay, traded. Anywhere but Philly. Gotcha. Anywhere but Philly. Gotcha. <laughs> like, all right, think Mike, about what continue. he must have felt on. Like I did ask also ask him, like, what were your emotions on that last day? Yeah, it, but it, it just made sense. Like they should have did, did, did this trade a month ago. Like it I knew a it month ago been. that Harden wanted to go there, right? Yeah, Ben was cool with going there, and and I'm sure uh, I, I heard that Kevin was okay with something like several weeks ago. So yeah, uh, both teams basically just wasted time. Uh, yeah, but um, Michael, wh- I think Ben fits what the Nets need too. Like he's a good fit. Exactly. They got enough shooters. He ain't got to shoot. I, I, you know, Mike, what were you about to say? Mark, yeah, yeah, Mark, without without going down the, the specifics of what I talked about and what Mike talked about, I'll just ask you this. Uh, when, it, when it comes to mental health and an athlete, and particularly basketball, you're covering basketball, where do you make the separation? You personally make the separation between what that athlete says about their mental health and the job that you have to do in covering how they play the game. So, yeah, he may have mental health issues, but you also have to evaluate him as a player. Does that change? Once you hear him say that, does that change your criticism of him uh, as a basketball player? Like, how, do you do you put him in different compartments? Are they no? One like how, I, how do you do? I, I, I don't. I think they're mutually exclusive. I just think if somebody tells you that they got an issue, it needs to be taken seriously. Um, I, I don't think he is afraid to play the game of basketball. I think he, he wants to play. He was asked about playing in, in Philly, and he said, yeah, I do hope I play that game. Now, I'm hearing that he'll be back sometime in mid-March. I don't, I don't, from what I could tell, I don't think he's fearful of going. I do still pretty good. I know he had a bad postseason. But he's still a two-time All-Star and one of the best defenders in the world and, and an elite player. Um, so I don't think he's scared of the competition. Uh, I think there's more to the story that perhaps we're not uh, privy to right now. We're not privy to. Yeah, and, that's, and that's what I was saying earlier, that um, he didn't owe us a therapy session. He didn't have to be crying or bare his soul yeah. for his, uh, his struggles to be legitimate. Mark Spears, bro, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for dropping knowledge. Um, and uh, yeah, don't don't ever try to like change a bet. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> like, that no, was, he the one that I'm was, talking that was, about. Was, he he, he the one playing. who changes. You, you know good no, now. I'm not playing. I'm just. Try. Try. I had to try. I'm just that's like a, track. That, that was funny. That was funny. That's like a. I'm, that's like that's I'm like just, a, the first four. Yeah. <laughs> Make this the NCAA tournament. Like that. I, okay, I guess sure. Hey man, like, like don't dog all. They always yeah. put the HBCUs in the first four, man. Don't dog that out. Oh, don't why you got to make it about that? Okay, you know I, you, you know, know what, what I mean. I'm just saying because they expanded. Why, why, why is the HBCU always in the first four, man? Why can't they get those respect? Come on, man. That's right. Telling you. Like, <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> no, number six, number sixty-two, number sixty-one, something. If we were, if Not we were white, it'd have been asparagus tips. Just yeah. come out, call us Jungle Brothers. <laughs> Thank you. All right, man. Appreciate, appreciate can't win, you, man. man. We can't oh, win. Wow. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.